Hey, everybody. It's the Leo and Danny Show. Please like the video, help us out with the algorithm, and check out our Patreon, where we post another full-length episode every week. Oh, yeah. Swolby just told us he has to take another dump. God damn it. You, that's not the kind of momentum that we want to start off a pod with, Swolby. It's not. Absolutely not. And it's not the kind of momentum I need in my toilet bowl because right. I just cleaned that thing. And it smells good now. It smelled horrid when you took a shit in it. But also, Danny, who doesn't plan their shits? Who doesn't plan their shits? I got my shits planned a week in advance. Dude, he has. I've seen his account, like his shit calendar. It's unbelievable. He's got a shit roll. Yeah, he has. He has not only that, the reading shit material, rolling. the reading material that he's mm-hmm. gonna do have during. And it's usually he doesn't use his phone. Mm-hmm. He needs older magazines, mm-hmm. yeah. vintage Playboy. Right. And I know exactly how many squares of Charmin I'm gonna use because I plan mm-hmm. out my meals in advance too. Mm-hmm. You're living life by the seat of your pants, and that's why you're fucking hookers and working for Amazon. <laughs> I'm living. I'm living life, my man. <laughs> That's why. Dude, as soon as you said fucking ogres, I just envisioned his stroke game, dude. Yeah. He was just uh, plowing. Solby was plowing. And by the plowing way, plowing and by prostitute. the way, we left in a clip. And so at 4 a.m., we had a hectic week last week. At 4 a.m., yeah. I had to get up to upload that video. And then we had to hop on a plane to Seattle. Yeah. I realized at 4 a.m., we'd left in the clip where Leo's complimenting your stroke game. And you <laughs> yeah. are leveling. <laughs> A blonde sex worker. <laughs> it was blurred, yes, but Ian left a window for your face. Yeah. And it just, you can still just totally see the shape of two people yeah. humping. And yeah. I cut it out. Uh-huh. I cut it out last second with the editor tool on YouTube. Yeah. But YouTube flagged that like automatically because yeah. uh, they have AI that picks up two hor- human forms having sex. Yeah. Immediate age restriction before the video went up, which was, which was a real bummer. But, you know, you play with fire. Which in this case is Swolby doing his thing. And you might get fucking burned. You might get your stomach came on too. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. And you might get your so toilet Chodley. shit in. What are you doing, Chodley? Chodley. Don't do that. Chodley. Chodley is, is Chodley's new character. He's got coming oh, up Chodley. with a thick penis. Chodley. 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 What did you say? Chodby. Chodby. Well, no, what did you say? Chodley. Chodley. Might be the name of one of these characters you filmed surreptitiously on the sidewalk. Let's oh show this clip God, real dude. quick. Yeah, Austin's going to play it. But we're going we're gonna to watch. Here, uh, come in here. Swolby, watch this with me. This is just striking to see in the, in the wild, you know, in the flesh. Two older men just really going at it, man. Oh. Yeah. Wow. You know, honestly, though, they're the really younger. in love. Yeah, one's younger. One is older. Uh, there is a lot of romance. I mean, a ton. It almost looks like a commercial or Shit. a television show. It almost, yeah, exactly. It almost looks like it was set up. It's like an eHarmony ad it's for staged. for the gays. Do you think we're getting to the point where pretty soon that's going to be on daytime television? I mean, when it is on daytime television, that's when the world really has changed. Right now, it's see because I put that on my story, and you'd be surprised the mm-hmm. amount of women mm-hmm. that sent me the throwing up emoji in mm-hmm. my DMs. I'm like, God, really? Yeah, I, I, women are very um, averse to homosexuality. They are because they're afraid that a guy they're dating is mm-hmm. going to be doing homosexual stuff. Right, and that's like one of the. I feel like women would be so their their self esteem would be basically at the gutter if their man got like seduced by another man like a a man stole your man bitch it's the ultimate fear oh, a it's, man stealing your man yeah it's the ultimate you think women and african americans are the ones who are um, struggling together in the oppressed Olympics. It's kind of ironic that both of them don't trust the homosexuals. Oh, they do. What is it about the black Oh, remember we've had this happen before. I mean, you know, you guys all remember the the story of what you mean one time? Ha 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 ha! Which when Danny just made a light joke about me sucking a dick in college, I yes ended. I said, yeah, it was only one time on Skid Row. Yeah, and these two black gentlemen. Yeah, they said, what you mean one time? That's one time too many, motherfucker. And they bounced so quickly; it was shocking how fast those guys walked away from us. That's going to be soon, though. This makeout, I feel like we're going to see that on a Jared Diamond commercial. <laughs> It just, Brian, oh my I didn't God. know what to get you for Christmas, so I got you this 
$3,500 ruby bracelet. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I Todd, a, that's too much. I have no. a phenomenal idea, dude, for Seaman Hoffman. We basically produce... Seaman Hoffman is a fringe member of our crew who wants yeah. to do gay stuff. He's the gay for pay guy. He was on one of these podcasts. He's a, in the Navy. He has an OnlyFans. Anyway, what if we made him do gay commercials instead of the gay porns? He had to do gay commercials and like make out with the black guy. Well, it lives with Brooks. I mean, we could, but I mean, I mean we make our own fake commercial. I mean, it's going to start off in print. We're going to mm. see a still shot of what Leo filmed on the side of the BART in San Francisco. That's oh where it my starts. God. And Just to make out like two gays yeah. in gay. Yeah. I, if we keep going the way we're going, I mean, think about it. I was at the Natural History Museum of L.A. yesterday, and I was looking at the exhibit they have called The Origin of L.A. or The History of L.A. Mm -hmm. There's a picture from 1910 of a bunch of men wearing top hats and women dressed like... I don't know, Cinderella's evil yeah, stepsister. Where they had those those wire things on their dresses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just in every inch of flesh is covered up. Yeah. And that was 100 short years ago. 100 years from now, a trans black man is going to be getting deep-throated <laughs> by a skinny punk rocker with AIDS. On In an ad? On a Disney commercial. On a Disney commercial? On a Disney commercial. He's going to be getting deep-throated, like just, just straight pornography yeah. in a Disney commercial. The, this is going to be the uh, the read for it. It's going to be like, middle school bites, especially when the guy you love deep-throats the, the linebacker on the football team. And they cut to... <laughs> They cut to the guy deep throating. Yeah. All right. Is there like I, th I think there's even like a like just for to make it more cinematic. There's a cum shot. Even even if it's a thirty second commercial, yeah. boom! It's you're turning you're turning the guy's blowing the load. On, yeah, it's disgusting. How do you deal with the pain? Yeah, you go up to your parents' attic and smoke a bowl of crystal meth. Cut to the scene of the kid doing it. <laughs> He's in the crystal. But too, you can't yeah. stop thinking about that long haired punk rock guy with the ability to deep throat. <laughs> Your best friend, Margaret, is pregnant. Oh. She's thinking about keeping the baby. Dude, this is a Disney But ad. instead, you decide to accompany her to her first abortion. And and in, in the first abortion, it, there has to be some kind of Mickey Mouse reference. So what happens? I think that like, Mickey Mouse is doing the abortion. That's how dark Disney okay. got uh, I get, in 100 I get years. I get okay. okay. So <laughs> yeah. it's like half cartoon, half real. Yes. Okay, sweet. Because mm, um, at that by that point the uh, you know the the artwork Dino would be working as an you know in, in animation at that point for sure. Why would Dino? Oh, I guess he draws. He draws. Yeah, man. Dino probably would be the creative head of Disney at that point. <laughs> at least, I mean, they would make him change politics. They would make yeah. him go left wing, but his general aesthetic, I think, they would value. He would he would sell out for the money. Dino, come on, he's like, wait, I can buy all the weed he's I the want. Next Walt Disney. I want to know. Actually, I'm scared to know what Swolby. And Dino would do if they saw this couple make it out on the sidewalk after a few drinks. All right, we gave uh, Dino a chance on the mic, and of course, we had to cut out what he said. He's disgusting, guys, and he has a lot to learn. He's a kid, though. Mm. He's got time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think maybe putting him on a little uh, workout regimen. What do you think, Swolby? I, uh, what would I'm, you put him I'm on? For, I'd put him on like a pull up, like. <laughs> <laughs> just start with pull ups. Pull ups. Yeah, just wide grip Every pull ups. Yeah, yeah, wide grip pulls. On yeah. the daily. Pull-ups are a little harder for him because of all the weight of hate in his heart. Oh, God. And because... So you're saying he wouldn't be able to manage one pull-up because of all the hatred? Yeah, him? I think so. I, I think he needs to go to the Holocaust Museum, and then he'll weigh like five pounds lighter. And mm -hmm. then take him to the gym and try to get him to do a pull-up. Uh, maybe. But then we got to take him down to the south. We got to take him inside of Uncle Tom's cabin. Pretty sure that's actually I know for a fact that's not a historical site, but you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah. Teach him about cultures, then I think he might be able to pull himself up. Let's talk about this oil spill going on. Can you pull this up, Austin? Yep. So, uh, well, some baby otters are getting drenched in oil. Huh? That's that's not my concern. I just I think there are so many otters and so many sea creatures. Stop it! I, so otters are so cute. Listen. <laughs> Okay, you want to know about the real holocaust of animals? Sure. The real holocaust of animals took place tens of thousands of years ago. Dinosaurs? No, 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 not them. That was space's fault. Hmm. If you really want to blame death of animals, blame space. Okay. The space god just chucked that meteor down into Mexico. It was a racist space god through the meteor. So? Yeah, saw the dinosaurs. It's all the Mexican dinosaurs were going around oh with god. ponchos and sombreros. And he said, no more for you. Yeah. They were like, hola, ice and cream. Ding, 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 ice and cream. Yeah, damn, fuck it. Look at those Mexican Como dinosaurs. Como esta? 
What do you say? I throw this fucking meteor down there, Steve. Yeah. Fuck them Mexican dinosaurs. They make it a spitball, huh? Uh, Todd? Yeah. Cool. There we go. Hey, fuck them, man. Yeah, you want to take a shit on it, too? Yeah. Well, 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 take well, a shit well. on it, man. And then the space god hurled it down, took out all the Mexican dinosaurs. <laughs> and the only dinosaurs that made it out were flying dinosaurs. Some that's true. That's, wh- that's where birds are. That's where birds came from. Goddamn. Here's the thing about animal holocausts that makes this look like absolutely nothing in comparison. I encourage this. A couple otters, some seagulls, maybe one dolphin gets its blowhole clogged and fucking sinks to the bottom of the ocean. When Americans, not when Americans, when people first came to Australia, they found this continent inhabited with gigantic land animals, the size of which we could hardly fathom today. Big, I I might be getting my animals confused here, but I think that was somewhere else. (laughs) Hmm. I could be wrong, but it, on North America and Australia, there were things like giant land camels, giant sloths, mm. just huge, lumbering, friendly, tame animals that had evolved in isolation from human beings. The animals in Europe and the animals in Africa had evolved alongside of humans, and they had learned a fear of human beings mm-hmm. because if the gazelle didn't learn to fear man, it was going to get a spear through its ear. Mm-hmm. And in, in Australia, though, they didn't know so what funny. humans were because humans just came by boat 10,000 years ago, 8,000 years ago. I'm not sure exactly. And then so when the humans got there, after learning all these sophisticated hunting techniques and they had to make a net and they had to throw it in the water and hope they bagged a puffer fish. And then they had they get there and there's a fucking 600 pound moose mm-hmm. that just like and, and they, they just- get Club it on the head. They could walk right up and left hook it on the jaw. <laughs> Stupid moose. <laughs> that thing's Tyson. on the ground and they just leisurely disembowel it while its family watches. Oh my God. And then they walk up to the, the sun moose. Hey, you're big and strong. <laughs> left hook the sun moose. They're all they're like Mike Tyson in his prime. Yeah. Wow. They could just fucking knock out a moose. Left handed, not even with the right. I guess the dodo bird was a similar story. That's what it was. It was just a fat ass bird that stopped flying because it didn't need to. It didn't have any enemies on the islands. The Galapagos, maybe. Maybe it was. Maybe the Galapagos Islands. Thank you, Leo. This has been uh, history with Leo. And guys like Dino would uh, be able to capture their first bird. You know, he he'd be a guy that he'd be in our cave. Maybe in our. uh, you know, on, on our ship, maybe if it was a uh, you know a hundred years ago, or maybe Dino would be in our cave as one of our our shitty cavemen, the guys that he would be in charge of cleaning up while me and you would hunt. Sure, I guess I don't know what Dino's function would be back then. Mm. Um, racism and weed growing weren't necessary <laughs> to tribal survival back right. then. He'd probably be like the chieftain's little boy toy. Oh, God, do you think he'd be getting fucked? Yeah, I mean, like, basically every civilization has had little boy toys at some point. That, that would probably be Dino's role, you know, Dino's, oldest job Dino, in America, yeah, in the world. A Neanderthal uh, tribe would kidnap Dino and just ravage him over and over again. When you look at these human sites, though, in Australia, mm-hmm. the date that humans arrived, or the period of years humans arrived, give or take a couple hundred or thousand, is exactly when all these giant land mammals disappear. And then the same thing started happening in North America, too. All these giant, slow-moving a- land animals disappear the moment that humans cross the Bering Strait. Mm-hmm. If you're fucking pissed about animals dying, get mad at our ancestors, Okay. If you're pissed about animal dyings, every everybody in PETA should commit ritual suicide if they want to do something for animal lives. Mm. Do animal lives matter? Is that the next movement? Then human lives don't. It's got to be one or the other. We got a long history of bludgeoning and poisoning and torturing animals for our benefit. There are There is like a community of like super vegans or whatever who want... They're called like extinction today or something like that. They think humans are such a detriment to the planet that we should all stop procreating and let us return to like mother nature or whatever. Jesus. Fuck. We've gone too far. We've already invented planes. You show me a sea otter or a gull that can build a 747 and I'll give in. I'll stop fucking my girlfriend so that they can have more space. (laughs) Until then, they all need to die. All right. Have you seen those otters? You stop it. They have little tiny cute arms, man. What do their tails look like, an otter tail? It's fucking like a little triangle, I think. Okay, I want to go... They got the little arms. They got the big cheeks. Come on, dude. You can't... Their tails are are triangles? 
I yeah. want to take a sea otter into a police interrogation oh, room. Oh, here it goes. With purely cement walls. I want to grab it by its tail like Mario grabbed Bowser. Come on. And spin around and around and then just release it until it goes... Dude, that otter and it would slips down the side of the. That vehicle. otter would shot. Dude, that otter would rip off your thumb with its fucking teeth. I want to take a porpoise, get it in oh. a headlock, and just punch it in the ear no. until it goes out. Why don't you go after an animal your own size? Go after a fucking great white. What would you do to a great white, Danny? They're murderers. I'm gonna take a porpoise once it's unconscious. Oh, I'm God. gonna strap it to the top of my car. Like a Christmas tree, but purposely do a real shitty job of tying it up so that the minute I get on the 10 freeway, it tumbles off into the road and a guy in a Suburban just cuts it in half. Yeah. Why can't you replace that poor por porpoise with a great white or maybe a Siberian tiger or something? A Siberian tiger is much more valuable than a porpoise, I think. But a great white, I'll answer your question. Yeah, what would you do to a great white? Because Danny? a great white... Mm -hmm is an agent of chaos in the ocean. You like him. A great white is Danny Mullen in shark form. <laughs> he kind of is, dude. God I like a great... I, they, get, they go out and they treat sea lions yeah. like we treat frisbees in football. <laughs> That's their sport. It's like, hey guys, it's Sunday. Yeah, we don't have work today. You guys want to go meet up at that rock island? Oh, God. 300 miles off the coast of San Francisco? Have some fun? They're like, yeah. Tell Bruce and tell fucking Sharky. <laughs> Bruce and I'm, Sharky. I'm out of shark names. Bruce and Sharky. <laughs> and then Bruce and Sharky mm. and Theodore uh -huh. all meet up and they just toss sea lions back and forth. And then they eat baby sea lions like edamame. Like edamame. <laughs> they just put the bones back. Yeah. They uh -huh. just flat. They fucking, they use their fin to Ooh, grab a, a baby one. sea lion by the tail. They know where they're from. They'll be like, ooh, this one's off the, yeah, this is a Mediterranean one. Mm, they scrape with their teeth the entire body of the sea lion until there's just that flat shell of sea lion skin. Oh my god. And all the guts and the skeletal yeah. structure is in their shark yeah. throats. And you know that they would have loved your samurai uh, little speech because mm -hmm. when a whale dies mm -hmm. out there they're like let's go fucking chomp on that fat bastard dude. He, another one passed out. They love eating dead whale. Here's what I'm going to do Leo. You raise a very good point. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put together such a highly targeted Google ad mm -hmm. for whale watching that it <laughs> only targets women over 300 pounds <laughs> it's gonna have to be how yes. could you do that it's gonna have to be yes an industrial whale watching boat with oh a lot God. of inflate emergency inflatable devices on it so if oh the boat starts God. going down those things will expand oh my God keep it afloat I'm gonna get <laughs> upwards of 30 300 pound plus women on yeah. this whale watching yeah. boat oh my God through again my ingenious Google ad campaign I'm gonna get them out there we're gonna take them off the coast of Catalina, and when they see their first humpback, uh. I'm going to signal to Theodore and Sharky, <laughs> and they're just going to start fucking, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to fucking just start shoving bitches off the boat. Jesus. <laughs> and Theodore and Sharky. Oh, my God. What is, so, wait, you're going to go through the trouble of making a fake business just to get a bunch of fat women on a boat yes. to then train a couple of great whites to fucking come around so you yeah. can throw them in there. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like like chum. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be like the back of a dump truck, actually. That's how I'm going to design oh. the deck. Oh, so my God. The, eh, but like first, just, the railing on the back is going to go, eh, 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 and it's going to descend, pressurized no, hiss no, no. as it completely retracts. Oh. And then... No. The and bow is going to start ah, raging. Ah, yep. and, that is the most fucked up thing and of all before, time. And before any of that happens, I'm going to pay a midget in a clown suit <laughs> to put oh canola God. oil all over the deck so there's no escape. Oh and then God. they're all going to slide, 300 pound plus women, into the waters, icy cold waters off Catalina. And Theodore and Sharky and Bruce are going to have themselves a sushi night. Wow. Did you, did you say you would have Swolby drop canola oil onto the deck? No, I did not say Swolby. I no. said a midget, a legitimate oh, a midget. dwarfism person okay. with a canola oil bottle and a clown suit. <laughs> They're just coming around and everybody's just confused. Like, oh, look, it's a little clown person. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? Uh, do you, uh, we're feeding them. We're feeding them like a lot because of their final meals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nachos and they got the, all the ballpark stuff, you know? Yeah. All that junk food. Yeah, maybe we yeah. can make a little mini game out of that too. Yeah. We can get like... It's like musical chairs. Mm -hmm. We get a Big Mac meal for every fat woman except for one, and then we watch them fight over it. Oh, my God. Stop. For the last two, we try to pin the last Big Mac. We try to pin the two biggest girls there, so it's a good matchup. You know, We're like, there's yeah. only one, ladies. 
and then we break a pool stick and we put it in the middle mm-hmm. and we go consider this tryout it's like yeah a batman <laughs> yeah sure 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 maybe there's one lifeboat yeah. and we let him fight over the one lifeboat oh my god but uh <laughs> surprise surprise the lifeboat can only support 250 pounds <laughs> <laughs> so it sinks mm-hmm. it sinks nice. yeah what well, to get back to this I'm tired of hearing about dead animals. Mm. All right? If you really want to fucking... If you have a bone to pick with people whose behavior killed animals, yeah. go after the Native Americans, okay? Okay. The Native Americans killed so many giant sloths and land camels yeah. that they deserved every inch of trail they had to walk, according to Andrew Jackson. Mm. The tra- about- the real trail of tears was the trail the fucking buffalo had to endure. Actually, that was the one. You think they all... The did, they, but did they use every inch of the animal? Didn't they... Didn't they eat its liver down to its ball sack? Yeah. I mean, they still... They killed a lot of shit. Swalby, turn that phone off. You know what? what the fuck, man? What about poachers? Like, dudes that go after, like, penguins and shit. I, I think most poachers aren't going after penguins. They might go over, go after some gorillas, elephants, or maybe some rhinoceri. So he's after the Eskimos. That's who Swolby's pissed at. Yeah, yeah. The, all the narwhals. Swolby, they you take could him. be. You look like an Eskimo. You. We should do a video where we find you, and you're just an Eskimo, and you don't speak English, and you're just. We need to find you an igloo. You need to. You need the cold. I'll do it, I, dude. I can't. I can't help but just go on offensive rants. I know, dude. D- Danny, yeah, that one was. Dark. I, I, dude, seriously, no. I can't believe the fake business. I mean, that would be really funny. I'd love to see the infomercial for that, <laughs> the Danny Mullen infomercial for the uh, the heavy women. Yeah, for the whale uh, we'll, watching. we'll get it going. We'll see how much it costs to rent a whale boat. watching for the whales, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whale whale watching now means watching a bunch of 300 pound women die. Yeah, that's going to be the new. It's more exciting than watching a big stupid animal try to get some barnacles off its oh back. Oh my god, and just get ch- just great whites just having a fucking field day in there. Yeah, Ooh. I don't know. Then we'll start with some uh, low level investments. Austin, maybe we'll Ooh. donate one of his podcast payouts. Yeah, <laughs> what do you think, Austin? It's a worthy cause. Yeah. Again, how much? And th- we'll change subjects a little bit here. Not really. We'll change uh, angles on this. Mm-hmm. I love how when we get here and we start talking about the oil spill, the first thing Austin says. Is that the oil spill is a conspiracy? Yeah, and there's only as much oil as would fill this room in the Pacific, and it's yeah. still making headlines. Yeah, Austin okay. always yeah. has to have the hardline conservative take on everything. Yeah, Here's he the, can't. I'll yeah. tell you the truth, man. This is how it is. How do you know? Did they put the measurement of the water the, of the oil in out in public? Because it's about a hundred and fifty thousand gallons of oil. Sounds like a lot. Mm-hmm. But 150,000 gallons of oil is a 50 by 50 by 50 cube. Huh. That's it. It's like the size of someone's apartment. It's like a, a truck of gas leaked yeah. into the ocean. Yeah. And they're making it out to be... How this- many gallons? Pull it up on this article right now. How many gallons? Because 150,000 gallons... I get what you're saying, but it seems like it was sure as fuck engulfed it, this room times a lot more. It says... Right here, I have it pulled up. Uh, the spill was initially estimated to be about 126,000 gallons of crude, but late Monday, state officials said that the number could be closer to 144,000 gallons. And this isn't like the same type of oil spill we had in Texas. This is already processed, refined, uh, thinner oil. That so you it's would premium use. you'd get at the pump. Well, yeah, it's like it's, what you it's would something put in your that could, car. It could go likely. right through the and, gills of all the fish in the ocean. Yeah, and it would just wouldn't do anything. To uh, them. Maybe it's, just, it's not the stuff that covers penguins in black sludge. Maybe it's the, a little different. What if the dolphins had a juice bar and instead oh. of juice, they just got like a a fucking a handle of premium and you just stick it down their blowhole and fill them up? I, I bet they'd get they'd do it to get high. Those bastards are fiends. They're they, fast. Yeah, yeah. they're they're well, smart. They're, I mean, they're smart. Yeah. yeah, I mean they they chop down on the specific jellyfish just to get a little high, and then they flip on their bellies and look up at the at the sun and they the fuck each thing. other and they fuck each other and they give they give each other blowjobs they fuck humans <laughs> mm. dolphins have have in many instances fucked humans it's a, it's a well documented thing yeah we need They're to find someone creatures. yeah we need to find someone that fucked a dolphin and put him right on that couch next to herpes girl emily knows everything brought in the guy who fucked a dolphin right really our yeah, old friend emily talked, knows yeah. everything oh, yeah. had a guy on her podcast i looked up a video on this guy can you youtube dolphin fucker austin yeah there's a guy who had a relationship with a dolphin and i think it was banging him or he was banging it or something oh, repulsive but emily just... knows everything brought him in and had this accepting interview with him like well, how was the relationship? How did your parents take? I, 
we would bring this guy oh, in. God. We'd bring Swolby in in a dolphin suit. <laughs> and like, <laughs> try to rape hey, him. Are you going to try to fuck him, dude? Why are you looking at him like that, Get him man? Get a little drunk first. Why are you looking at him like that? Yeah, man. I uh, There's also the woman that would jerk off a dolphin. Remember that one? Where did we read about that? I don't know about that. I see no harm in a woman jerking off a dolphin. She, she was a trainer, and this dolphin would take advantage of her, and, and she would just like feel like she would need to give him like a hand job or hand like jerk him off that's good of her good instinct video yeah. on it it's a three minute video on the guy who fucked the dolphin let her roll oh, oh my shit, god this is gonna be interesting this is an, in, an interesting intro to this youtube video i don't see how this is going to be about dolphin fucking or was that an ad I guess they had a sponsorship. Oh. <laughs> Dude, he, he, he claims she seduced him. Malcolm Brenner wrote a book, Shit, Wet Goddess, we about his experiences dolphin, with the dolphin who he claims to have a relationship with when he was a student. Jesus Christ. Malcolm Brenner is a self-confessed so nice. zoophile who claims he had an affair with a dolphin <laughs> called Dolly after the she... The dolphin's name is Dolly. Yeah. <laughs> And, I, and, and he says she seduced him. Now 68, Malcolm yeah, was still a student when he embarked on the relationship with the bottlenosed dolphin in the 1970s. Wow. He has written a novel, Wet Goddess, which tells we have the to story of a goddess. young man who has a sexual relationship with a dolphin, Ruby, Ruby. while he's oh working at a theme park. That's a dolphin fucker? Malcolm has admitted That's the book is autobiographical and based right on his own experiences. It's based on his own experiences. He Look said, I wrote this book for dolphins because we are mistreating these animals by keeping them in captivity. Malcolm yeah, claims to have been one. in his yeah, early I watched 20s the documentary when he on this started guy. his relationship with Dolly. He was a keen photographer and was allowed to take pictures in the pool at a former theme park in Sarasota, Florida, where he lived. The student was allowed to swim with the dolphins and soon formed a close bond with Dolly. He said, I was given free access to the dolphins and I oh, became friends no. with her by going swimming with her. Do you think oh. it was all she physical? Was very special. Malcolm claims Dolly announced her intentions towards him by positioning herself so he was rubbing against her. He added, at first I discouraged her, I wasn't interested. <laughs> After some time I thought, if this was a woman would I come up with these rationalizations and excuses. Mm, Malcolm insists that, Dolly became more and more aggressive in her pursuit of him. Look at that. He said, I found that extraordinarily erotic. Oh. It's like being with a tiger or a bear. This is an I mean, animal that oh, we could all relate to that. Yeah, exactly. if it wanted to. <laughs> then, one night after the theme park had closed, Malcolm he says, says he, he and Dolly you? eluded the male dolphin so they could spend time alone and eventually had sex for the first time. For the first he explained, time. there's something quite transcendental about making love with a dolphin. Malcolm has always stressed there was nothing abusive about his relationship with Dolly and that dolphins by the basically dolphin have free will. <laughs> he creamed by the dolphin? What is impulsive about a relationship <laughs> where both partners feel and express love for each other? I know what I'm talking about here because after we made love, the dolphin put her snout on my shoulder, embraced me with her flippers and we stared into each other's eyes for about a minute. This was not some Unreal. dog trying to hump my leg, okay. This was a 400 pound, wild born female dolphin. <laughs> she was an awesome creature. She's fat. But you nine months after arm. Malcolm began his relationship with Dolly the park closed and she you was think moved put it elsewhere. In her ass? It sent you, the eventually. young student into a spiral of depression. <laughs> He said, I called it a relationship because that's what it was. When she died, it made me feel terrible and I fell into a depression which lasted five years. <sighs> Malcolm also Sol claimed the a, separation had a, a devastating impact a on the female dolphin. <laughs> she died shortly <laughs> after she was moved and Malcolm firmly believes she committed suicide by voluntarily stopping breathing. Oh uh, don't flatter yourself, Malcolm. Yeah, relax. Okay, let me say this. Both parties here are at fault. You wait, you're blaming the dolphin? Okay, a dolphin who seeks out the human cock. men yeah. to get fucked by them is like a human man who hops fences to fuck horses. Holy shit. You're growing cross species, and the dolphin was in on it, was compliant. Fuck that dolphin. I'm glad it stopped breathing and took its own life. Maybe, so you know what? Stop it. a hoe. No. Just, I'm saying beyond call the, the dolphin a I'm host, saying the dolphin be. was seeking out another species to fuck. I'm saying the dolphin was a sicko. Listen, it was a danger a, to the dolphin community. Listen, yeah. don't you ever wonder if you were meant for more? Maybe that dolphin was just like, you know what? I'm smarter than these guys on earth. I might as well bang one, see what it's like, see what I'm missing. And either I bet because she didn't, you know, I feel like maybe it was great. Maybe she wanted to be a human. Okay. People, they're called furries, Leo, mm -hmm. follow the same process of rationalization. Really? Yes. Who, who, am I better than this dog? Maybe it's great to make a love to a golden retriever. 
you know God, what? Know I'm that. not going to let society dictate what I do. Really? And I, yeah. And then they're f- liquored up and they're sliding into pooch. <laughs> you know what, dude? I would. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know if I could fuck a furry, dude. I, I would hope not. The <sighs> dolphin, I'm glad it's dead. But also, what? The, the photographer who works at SeaWorld, who starts hopping fences at 3 a.m. to get into the dolphin tank, mm. and who shackles up the male dolphin so it can take the other side of the pool. That's pretty gnarly, yeah. This guy, I mean, the fate he deserves, because at least the dolphin, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Like, a dolphin wanting to bang a human is novel. It's still a piece of shit dolphin. Don't get me wrong. Stop it. But it's novel enough that I'll let it go. I hope like, he went down on the dolphin, at least. I just, uh, that, I mean, what tum- fate? Tum- I just, I, I want to get every toaster that they have in stock at every Walmart plug them all in and kick them over the side of the pool at once while that guy's dog paddling. Oh, come on. Just <laughs> smoke them. Yes. The, the dolphins are smarter than the guys. They could probably do a little flip onto the deck and wait for it to all and then get back in. They're so smart, man. Sure. Yeah. I'll save the, the, the male dolphin that got cuckolded. I'll yeah. save his life. Yeah. We he's can give guy, him some dude. tuna while he's getting his belly rubbed on the deck yeah. while Malcolm is getting incinerated. Yeah. I'm down for that. I want to put a million volts into the pool oh my God. where this dolphin fucker is treading water. Well, he didn't age well. You saw when he was young when he was fucking the dolphins. He was a pretty good looking guy. But then when he got older, now he does, he's not looking too, too good. He had a lot of stress, you know, but people were probably calling him the dolphin fucker his whole life. I mean, yeah, they, as they should. I mean, imagine you saw that guy at Starbucks. He's getting his coffee. He's about to leave. You're like, hey, <laughs> why did you get, take it away, Danny? What would you say to the poor guy that fucked a dolphin if you saw him in person? Well, first of all, I would be the barista because everybody knows I have a part-time job at Starbucks. <laughs> and he'd be like, hey, yeah, can I get a caramel frappuccino, uh, the venti? And I'd be like, yeah, absolutely, man. What's your name? Malcolm. Okay, great. Yeah, let me write that down. Got a caramel frappuccino for dolphin fucker. Dolphin <laughs> fucker in the building. You know what? Instead of uh, leaving the regular circular opening, I tried to shape it with the silly putty I have into the shape of a dolphin pussy. Oh, my God. Why don't you dude. fuck the lid of your drink, you abusive oh. wet mammal fucker? He fucks wet mammals. That's what he... That's as he's leaving, that's what you'd say. You'd be like, you fuck wet mammals. Yeah. But yeah, that's... He, he had a lot of those moments. You know, he had a lot of... He, he went through a lot of that kind of abuse. That's why he aged terribly. I, I, I'm saying that in addition to targeting all the fat women for my whale watching boat, mm-hmm. this guy is going to get an invite. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get him aboard the boat. You he think- he can be the captain from the Titanic that goes down with the ship. <laughs> This is, uh, I mean, this would be quite the event. I feel like the video would do really well. It would do well. Yeah, it probably wouldn't violate any community standards. No. Absolutely not. Uh, no. 30 obese women are slashed to ribbons by shark teeth. Oh, my God. That'd be... They'd perform well. They would perform well. I don't know. YouTube might eventually think, you know, maybe the vi- maybe somebody will forget to blur something or something. But it should be good yeah, for a while. Yeah, well, we definitely can't let Austin edit it. No. You think this guy's girlfriend... Or- ex-girlfriend like started dating chicks while they were together and he got his heart broken and he just like his ex-girlfriend started dating chicks while they were together yeah yeah yeah. and he wanted to one up her so he said i'm a fucking dolphin he's like i'm a fucking alpha i'm gonna fuck this dolphin and show her who's the fucking dolphins have the blowholes too right yeah yeah oh god you think he fucked its bull i (laughs) wouldn't put anything past this guy you think he did anal? okay so you said not the first time he didn't do anal the first time he did anal. Yeah, I think he worked up to anal. And I think mm. it kind of like Bill Clinton. Remember when they asked Bill Clinton about Monica Lewinsky and he mm. was acting like he was sick to his stomach? Yeah. Like, read the charges and I'll be Bill Clinton reacting. I'd be like, um, uh, Mo- one Monica Lewinsky claims that you made her lift her skirt in the Oval Office and spread her asshole. Um, she claims <laughs> that you uh, blew a load in her mouth and some of it dripped onto a dress that she has since frozen. Oh, my Lord, be- I can't take this language. Uh, it, she also claims that at some point you put a nice, nice, expensive Cuban right up her fucking snatch oh, and a, took it out and smelled it and I'm then put it in God. your mouth. I can't, I can't be listening to this talk. You tasted the, the oh. cigar with the pussy juice on it. Yeah, that's that's fucking how. That's uh, how this guy was acting when they interviewed him about it. Like, yeah, it was just it was love. It was. But, you know, when he was after hours in the dolphin tank, he was spreading his cheeks yeah. on the edge of the pool. And the dolphin would like swim up and put its nose in there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, that shit you think happening. he would immediately just take his trunks off as soon as like everyone was gone and he was getting the he got the after hours time. Yeah. 
he would just take his trunks off and he was just fucking free balling uh-huh. in that and, and having his cock out rubbing everywhere. Yeah, and he would get no, nose fucked up the ass. That is just just gnarly, dude. The pool was equal so would, parts chlorine and his cum. And just right up in there, man. Yeah, right up oh in there. Oh my god. How much oh would I have to God. pay you to get a dolphin nose up your asshole? By a a lot, a lot. But you know, they probably down in Mexico. <laughs> I, I swam with dolphins in Mexico, and I guess it's like one of the least ethical things you could do because of how shittily they treat the dolphins. Oh, poor guys. I was a sophomore in high school. I didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. But uh, they probably like the Mexican dolphin trainers probably take bets down there oh. after they've had much tequila at night, <laughs> like what they can do sexually with the dolphins. And I'm sure a few pesos have changed hands over a dolphin nose up the oh ass. Oh my God. Do you think that's just the morning meeting and they're like, hey, did you see the fucking Fred, dude? He put his dick in the blowhole hey, again. for five. Flipper fucking came at him at like 20 <laughs> knots, Holmes. No. And put their fucking nose right up his fucking <laughs> shit, S.A. That's crazy. You think that these fucking Americans, they don't know. They think the donkey show is good. Well, they think they should see the dolphin show oh, after fuck. hours. Fuck. Fuck. Remember that family from fucking Tallahassee that came in yesterday? Oh, dumbasses, man. I told them, oh, yeah, we treat the, the dolphins really good. We give them the best fish. Fuck these dolphins. The fuck, dude. We give him like <laughs> we fucking just like pour some cerveza on the deck and say yeah. lap it up, flipper. <laughs> but fucking one of like the five year old girls, she was yeah. clab- grabbing the fin uh, and it still had Jose shit all over the fin. Oh right? shit, dude, no way. Yeah, dude, yeah she wrote it across the pool. No way, that's crazy, man. Yeah, man, I could, I saw it. That was a lot of shitty head in there, man. We did that and they made a highlight edit for us afterwards, which is cool, you think, because. Mm. You fucking rode dolphins, and the training is really amazing. Like, a dude snaps his finger, and the two dolphins circle behind you. They circle behind my 14-year-old body and sodomize me now. They put their <laughs> they put their noses on the bottom of your feet while you're laid out Superman-style in yeah. the water with a life vest on. And they just start swimming really fast in unison until you do a rose on the Titanic in the water. No way. It's mind-blowing what they do. But afterwards, <laughs> the video they put together of that... Again, it would be a, a keepsake for the rest of your life. But the non-negotiable soundtrack that they cut every video to is Smash Mouth's All Star. No, dude. <laughs> so everybody, everybody's dolphin video has to start with "Somebody no, once dude. told me the world is gonna That's roll hilarious. me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed." Oh my god. And I, it's just already that song was out of fashion. This was oh 2006 and Smash Mouth had their time in what? 1999, That's 2000. That's so funny. They, you know, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall for that, like meeting when the guy pitched that that should be the new song for every video. <laughs> It is big in America, man. Uh, come on, man. This is, a great, this is one of the greatest songs of all time, man. Come on. Smash Mouth is just... The, they are so unbelievably shitty nowadays. We used to like... Imagine. My buddy Tim and I loved them in fourth grade. I, yeah, I, that was a fantasy, man. Everybody was. We played Astro Lounge the entire way to our field trip in Columbia, mm-hmm. which is a little mining town up in Northern California. But... The last time I checked in on Smash Mouth, there was like a joke blog article about them. It was a real story, but you could tell whoever wrote it was like, these pieces of shit. Mm. The title of it was Smash Mouth booed off stage and then hit with bread and water bottles while they try to play All Star. What? I like. I think that was the fucking title. No way. So somebody just like, it was probably like at some festival and they weren't yeah. like, and somebody just got pissed. Yeah. And they were trying to fucking... They thought they'd win the crowd back <laughs> with, you, with their would platinum you, single. Would you be abusive to Smash Mouth if you were just shit-faced at a, and they came on stage at the wrong time when you're shit-faced at the peak crazy Danny Mullen? Oh, you yeah. think you throw something? You guys ready to hear some rock and roll? Get the fuck out of here, you fat goateed bitch. <laughs> hey, that's not how we talk up here. Somebody uh, once... Uh, I wish somebody had once told you to jump off a bridge, fatso. Oh, my God. That's what I hit him with. I saw Austin will love this. Um, who's the... Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was tweeting about gun violence and how really the incidence of gun violence and the amount of people killed by gun violence mm-hmm. is minuscule, and we probably shouldn't modify the Second Amendment... Based on a few gun deaths. And if you look at any article about, uh, like, gun deaths or whatever um, over the course of the year, pay attention because almost all of them will include suicide gun deaths, which is accounts for, like, 60% of them. There we are. So, Neil deGrasse Tyson tweeted something about that. 
the official Smash Mouth Twitter blue check mark responds, you know what? You should shut up to Neil deGrasse Tyson. And it's got thousands and thousands of hearts. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. You should look that up right now. Yeah, that sounds You crazy, guys need yeah. to see that I'm not lying. It was the this most is nuts. It was so exemplary of the celebrity trying to be like, I, I'm, I'm woke. Wow. Just e- exemplary. So uh, indicative. So yeah. demonstrative. Yeah. I don't know what word I'm looking for, but yeah. it was just like the. Dino, what words are you looking for? I don't want to hear from Dino again. We're going to have to cut out of the. Fucking there we go. Thank you. But it was just. It, shit. it was basically them. It, Everything the left is criticized for, not caring about facts, only caring about emotion and looking good, yeah. is exemplified by this tweet. Yeah. Austin's looking for it. Smash Mouth responds to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Anything? Yeah, I got it right here. Oh, great. Please read it aloud. The whole thing. Both tweets. It says, in the past... 40- from Neil. From Neil yeah, first. from Neil. In the past 48 hours, the U.S. horrifically lost 34... 34- Turn myself up a little bit. In the past 48 hours, the USA horrifically lost 34 people to mass shootings. On average, across any 48 hours, we also lose 500 to medical errors, 300 to flu, 250 to suicide, 200 to car accidents, and 40 to homicide via handgun. Often, our emotional our emotions respond more to spec, spectacle than to data. Sorry, I can't read. I'm retarded. And then Smash Mouth says, fuck off, there's your data. So they're actually coming, they're in support. No, what are you talking about? No, no they're, they're not they're at all. Not. Austin, he's you're too saying, high to make comments. Fuck right off now. is the data he's referring to. So yes. he's saying that no, no, to fuck I off. Think Neil deGrasse the Tyson data. is providing data, and then Smash Mouth is saying, oh. fuck off, there's your no, data. You're, no, that's not true. Smash Mouth is absolutely, go look at the responses to Smash Mouth's tweet. Uh, Everybody else is taking it as they are taking Neil deGrasse Tyson on. Now, well, everyone, please stream All Star on all of their devices to give them a couple bucks for this perfect tweet. Oh my god! If I if somebody once told me Smash Mouth was gonna roll Neil deGrasse Tyson, I would think they ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. But now I'm looking kind of dumb. Maybe they are rolling them. Dude, they for sure are. This was at the height of gun violence hysteria, and they are making Neil deGrasse Poison. Neil deGrasse Tyson's point by saying that people respond more to emotion than data by yeah. just being emotional shitheads. Yeah, there's no math. Oh, it, math doesn't matter God nowadays. Your data. Yeah, yeah, Jesus, Austin. <laughs> Fucking Austin. Dude. Well, I'm sorry. They're it's harvesting a, weed it's, right it's now. What are you going to do? I know. Take. I That's true. If someone would even say it, 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 it is smoking true. your hash. Yes it, or no? Have you been? Have you guys made the hash? He, I have been smoking the hash. He God makes a good point, it, though. Dude. Austin makes a good point that it's just insane that anybody could fail to see the irony in what they're doing there, which, again, is making Neil deGrasse Tyson's point by being emotional and yeah. not data-driven. Which tweet got more likes? Smash Mouth on. Huh? Uh, no. Neil deGrasse really? Tyson did. He, Neil deGrasse Tyson got 274,000 likes. How many on Smash, Smash Mouth? Smash Mouth got 74,000. They had some tracks. Walking on the Sun was a was jam. Great. But also, there are some songs on Astro Lounge that are completely unforgivable. Really? Yeah. Just this bad. This weird blend of reggae and ska and mm-hmm. rock mm-hmm. that only a bunch of corny Guy Fieri looking button up shirt assholes could put together. Let's make a video just touring around trolling Smash Mouth. We like go to like three of their locations. Trolling them. I, I mean, their front doors. They're football fans. I saw them respond to Skip Bayless recently. Actually, we should start. We should. You should tweet at them right now. We both should. What about you, Swole? I'll do it. Okay. Wow, well, that's this is going to send ripples through the online oh, community. Yeah. You sure you oh, want to yeah. do this, Swolby? What about yeah, Dino? Let's do it. I don't know if we can take the fallout as a unit as an organization here. Dino should let's do light it. Light them up. I gotta piss again, dude. I, did I drink way too much water before this? Probably a lot of coffee too. I looked it up. I yeah, I haven't drank a lot of coffee. I mm-hmm. guess that's what does it to me. Mm-hmm. Caffeine. I read an article that says if you get up to piss more than twice a night, like you might have a problem. Yeah. And, and I routinely get up to piss three times a night. Every single night, three times. Often. Well, I, I know I've seen, I've witnessed it, Danny. I mean, I would me and me and Nico, have, Nico, because he moms us. He's been momming us a lot, mm-hmm. playing the the mom of the group. And Nico has yeah. told us for a long time that he thinks you should go get checked, just in case. Are you mm-hmm. chugging Dasani before bed? 
Dude, I hope not because that shit has it's. I think it has deer semen or something that makes it taste horrible. I love Dasani. Arrowhead oh, is the shitty water. Uh, Arrowhead can, is the go-to I can, shitty. I water. like Arrowhead over Dasani. I, I only fuck with Evian, Fiji, and 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 some glass bottle water. Leo, time. for your channel, I'm gonna do a blind taste test because I bet your ass would not be able to. Tell I'd be able to tell the difference. I would like to do that I, too. I, do, I know. Blind. I will know which one's Aquafina. I will no, know which won't. one's uh, no, Dasani, and no. I will know which one's Evian. No, you won't. I can we send fucking yeah. Dino to the corner store right now? Yes. Go ahead, Dino. Go bring three. Go, go get three. It. You put twenty on it, God. Go ahead, guys. Okay, yeah, but grab the microphone. You know, I have to walk. And no, uh, you know what, Danny? No, because you have to wit you have to witness he him pour pouring up. the water because he wouldn't be able to distinguish. Like he would fuck up the math. He, He'd be like, would. he would just bring three cups and be like, Oh, I don't know which one's which. It's like you wanted me to pour equal parts Dasani, Aquafina, and Arrowhead in each cup. No, right? dude. No, that's not what we wanted, Dino. Yeah, we wanted a suicide of water. Yeah. Now I, this still actually be a sneaky trick. He says he doesn't have his glasses. We should actually oh. still send him to the supermarket so he gets hit by a car walking across the street. Nah, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> they just like raided gummy, the roads dude. out here. There's I'm way convinced he's like. I don't think his bones would break. <laughs> I think they're rubber. I think he's Gumby. I think, on the contrary, he would snap like a dried out <laughs> desert twig. <laughs> yeah, I think he might be the first person to just have his spine break in half. Oh my god! Have you seen? You know what happened to Conor McGregor and like Anderson Silva's leg? Yeah, how it was just flapping around by a skin joint. Yeah. I think that's gonna happen to him right at his navel. Oh, but he'd be fine. They'd put him back together, and it'd be like nothing happened. Not before we fold him in half like a card table. Oh my god! Would you fuck with him? Would you make a video like unfolding Dino? I don't know what the hell I would do with him. I don't know. I'd You'd fuck him for sure. I. He probably wouldn't want to go to the hospital because. When's the last time you went to the hospital, Dino? I want to know about your last medical issue. I, you went to the hospital? Last medical issue? One I time. I don't uh, even fucking remember, honestly. I, uh, so the only one time, time I can remember, I broke my knuckle. Doing what? I punched a desk. Why? A guy, uh, <laughs> my fucking, uh, my teacher said we had to read a passage from Jane Austen, and I was like, fuck women, and she was like, read it, and so I just punched the desk as hard as I could. <laughs> uh, my teacher, uh, my teacher said that, like, weed can, is like a gateway drug, so I punched the fucking wall, and I said, gateway my dick. <laughs> this story is pretty funny, but I don't know if you should tell it, Dino. Tell it. <laughs> what happened, Dino? We want to hear the story. Deny us. Go, Dino, go. All right. So I was putting my feet on the back of the. All right. You know how you have a desk and you have like a grating underneath your chair you can put like textbooks in? Yes. I wanted to like put my feet up on it. All right. Know? Like. All right. You were What, what grade yeah, was this? Was what like, what, no, what don't year? Do that was shit. this high school? Like, no, this is fucking middle school. All right. Middle school. And then. Uh, he fucking drops a textbook on my shins. <laughs> I'm oh like, my bro, God. Come on, bro. You want me to be like that? And then he grabs my, my notebook and then rips the front off it and starts ripping through pages. Like, all right, motherfucker. No. And I stand up and like, I was literally about to fucking knock this kid's head off. And then, Jesus. dude, you were going to punch him in the face. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I'm not about to punch this kid in the face, but I'm I punched his desk. I punched a notebook. I thought it would fucking help a little, mm -hmm. but it didn't, and I fucking broke my knuckle. But I didn't know I broke it. Did until you hit like it? And you're like, later. ah, or no? No, it didn't really hurt. So you hit it, and then and then uh, the teacher came over and said, "What are you two dumbasses doing?" Or I was like, "Ah, oh, you freaking faggot!" And then I no, fucking, you called I, him a faggot. You can bleep that off. I don't know. <laughs> and then I fucking stormed out of the room into the hall. I was like. And the teacher came out to me. I was like, I was about to punch him in the fucking face. But I didn't want to do that. So I didn't. Unbelievable. <laughs> and this, then uh, I didn't get in any trouble. So it was no, yeah, cool. And he told my parents some story like he. I got it slammed in the bathroom Yeah, he got door it slammed in a door. and <laughs> just lied. I, you know I what? backed a lie. Dude, I'm really surprised that that uh, notebook didn't offer any padding. Yeah, yeah, usually they do. You know what we should do? We should tape a notebook to your chest and then tee off with a twenty two rifle on you. What do you think about that idea? I think it would Genius. help soften the blow a little bit. At twenty two, he might survive. A oh, notebook. God. If we got like three of those suckers taped on him, I think he'd be okay. Yeah, I think so too. What do you think, Dino? Yeah. You do that good. for a video? 
if Danny says it'll probably be all right, then it'll probably be all right. So like, yeah, the last time Danny had an idea for the Slosha Brothers, it didn't go over so well. Huh? Did not go over so well. It's been at some home. family, uh, some family strife, but it's okay. It's yeah. gonna be all right. They they will grow from it, and everybody will forget and forget, forgive and forget. And it's gonna be all good. I went to the birthday. I went to the Dino's graduation thing. It was great. So yeah. Did anything interesting happen there? I um, yeah, a lot of interesting things. It was the best sushi of all time, but uh. I doubt that for some um, reason. You know, Mostly because it wasn't in Japan, this dinner. Yeah, that's true. You know, it was a really good sushi, and it was white guys making it, but they did a good job. They studied up. They Not okay with that. Mimicking the accents of the Orient, mm. which was nice. It sounds like this place is uh, built for L.A., huh? <laughs> it would go over really well here. They were doing accents. They were acting like samurai guys. They were actors, uh, mm-hmm. but they did a good job. Mm-hmm. They made us these little rolls. There was all kinds of fun different tastes so it was white Dude, it people was pretending insane. to be japanese yes It'd be funny if every hour there was a hiroshima air raid siren <laughs> siren and they all had to run for cover yeah that would be hilarious like oh the it coming again yeah yeah, yeah. And everybody just goes down under and then every oh, half oh, hour oh. a dude comes out in a godzilla costume and just kicks over a random table <laughs> And they don't even pay for the bill. So just one person gets their sushi destroyed by Godzilla every They're like, hour. Remember, if you get your sushi destroyed by Godzilla, you don't pay. Mm-hmm. So No, you do pay still. Oh, you do, you still, that's, that's you the still pay. It's a gamble, but the sushi is so good you're willing to risk it. Yeah. And you then can eat it off the floor if you want. Every 15 minutes, a guy comes around <laughs> and tries to sell you a PlayStation 5. <laughs> and you're like, come on, dude. I, oh you know I got God. that the day it came out. Oh my god! Yeah, and then they come out and do so- you do sake shots. It was good, man. It was it was a good time. Okay, yeah. it was awesome. Great. We were in Washington this weekend, and it, it probably I guess was a little more eventful than Dino's sushi dinner. Washington was uh, wild, folks. We went to Evergreen College, which can you pull up the Evergreen College video real quick, Austin? There's one made by Vice that is very concise and gets to the heart of what this school is all about. First of all, I could just gonna say off the top, it's it's like a different world out there, man. We went to the, this. I don't think there's any argument is the most liberal college in all of America. And we went there. And by the time we left, I can promise the fan base. Everybody on campus hated us. Yeah. Everybody on campus knew who we were. Yes. And we probably sent a couple of those women to their counselor, to an emergency room Mm -hmm. with a panic attack. I'm sure many will claim they have PTSD based on what we did. Yes. No exaggerations at all. We should start going to more college campuses. That's a good way to get the word out. I may, yeah, maybe, actually. That's true. Check this out. Fuck you and fuck the police! Here's where we went. Evergreen State College in Washington (laughs) went crazy when a professor of evolutionary biology named Brett Weinstein objected to a day of absence when white students and faculty were asked to voluntarily leave campus. Weinstein branded it a form of racial segregation. A group of student protesters called him a racist. The confrontation incited further protests, debates over free speech, and claims of systemic racism on campus. They use systemic And things haven't calmed down. Tomorrow, Evergreen will hold its graduation at an off-campus location, 40 miles away. Would you like to hear the answer or not? No! no. Are you okay. get it? This is the video viewed by millions that we can pause it right here. Sta- it goes on longer and longer, but in this video, kids who are maybe even more left than my fake Bernie Sanders character from the 4th mm-hmm. of July video, super left. they start popping up. Oh. One quote here is that we need to do away with the First Amendment. Free speech has to end. That, um, I mean, watching, I say in the video, in the main video, that watching these kids try to explain why this professor is racist, it will make you want to body slam a puppy. It's bad. There's one girl who's like, she literally, this is her response. He tried to, uh, um, black, um, uh, history of oppression, um, fuck you. Yeah. Like, that is how they reason that this guy is a racist for objecting to a day that kicked all white people off campus. So I saw this, and I knew we had to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we took a, three po- a three-pronged approach. Number one, create a fake liberal religion with commandments such as 
get quilted northern toilet paper to start printing the First Amendment on all rolls so we can wipe our ass with the first. That's one of the commandments of the religion. Number two is we're going to install video games in every first grade classroom. Oh Arcade-style video games called Little Cop Killer where a kid with a propeller hat shoots police officers, and we actually got an animation of that. We like got the video game made. So I was showing this around campus, this Five. insane liberal religion with Leo. Uh, Leo, let's tell him about a friend of ours that we met. Maybe we shouldn't say his name so word doesn't get out who this is. We can't say his name, but um, we met a kid that was pretty liberal. Let's just say that. <laughs> we met a kid who um, was so liberal, it was frightening. He loved everything we had to say. Oh, yeah. In fact, he was perfectly okay when I... Oh, my. This is just crazy. I can't even fucking... I... Should we even spoil it? Oh, no. yeah, we can say it. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, people will still love it when they yeah, actually yeah, see yeah. it. Yeah. I ask him if he's okay with me because we made up a prototype role of Quilted Northern. Before he says this to you, Austin and Dino, you're really not going to think that this actually happened, but I witnessed it. We show him the prototype Quilted Northern with the First Amendment on it. And I say, blank, if you really hate America as much as you say you do, because he was like just all for fuck America, I was like, you'll watch me go over to that patch of ivy, drop my pants, and wipe my ass with this right now. <laughs> and he's like, I'm willing to do that in service of the cause. <laughs> all right. And guess what, guys? What that wasn't wasn't even the so most, I, most so shocking thing. So I go thing. over, and I just squat and start wiping my ass while this kid watches respectfully wiping my ass with the First Amendment in front of the student, and then I walk right over and just shake his hand oh, with yeah. my wipe hand. Dude, guys, uh, you, if you think that was the most shocking moment of that interaction, there's one more that I thought was even more shocking. Should we tell him about that one? Yeah, so he had the worst skin I've maybe ever seen. He had very, very bad acne. He had a lot of black heads, and he had a lot of white heads also. He had both black and white heads. So I told him that I needed to go to his forehead and pop this giant white head because it was racist. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's a white head. And I, the, the part that I have been replaying over and over in my own head is when Danny shows him the, uh, the pus in the, uh, in the toilet paper and he goes, just wanted to make sure you saw it's a white head. Yeah. I popped this fat fucking zit on his forehead. The guy was down to let him pop a white head on his forehead because it was white. Yeah. Not a black head. It couldn't touch the black heads. Mm. Because they don't have the same opportunities the whiteheads have. Of course. Yeah. There's yeah, white, so black, whitehead white head privilege. Heads. They'll it's just pop easier. on their own sometimes. They'll yeah. pop on their own. It's way you know. easier. I mean, they, the whiteheads are just living large, but the blackheads get hit with the, uh, the, the loofahs. They get hit with Neutrogena mm -hmm. all the time, and it keeps mm -hmm. them down. Was it satisfying? Uh, I, I wish. I told Leo after that I wish I had an hour with that kid like under a dentist lamp just to pop oh, all of his zits. Dude, he had like, he had uh, so many zits, man, poor kid. You guys got to get on Accutane. That's what I did. Yeah, he needs he needs to get on Accutane. That's what Leo said right away. But dude, yeah. th his face was swollen up. There were parts of his face that looked like he had just been whacked on the forehead with a crowbar. Mm -hmm. They were so he had hematomas <laughs> that were zits and the yeah. whole side the whole right side of his neck you could see that these things, they looked like the little slots in a hornet's nest. Just was, hollowed out blackhead slots. It was, it was by far the worst acne I've ever seen in person. Poor kid. Yeah, man. I, how, there must be a reason why he's not on Accutane. Otherwise, he's just like yeah. an idiot or just doesn't know. The, like, right. so, Maybe Accutane is run by the man, right. man. Maybe that's what it is, yeah. It but, is kind of a bitch to go through. It sucks. I heard, yeah. It makes you irritable, and your lip, every, your skin gets dry as fuck. You you can't get hard. Your you're like your cock shrinks and stuff. <laughs> anything that touches your face. That's why Dino's got the bigger cock, huh? Yeah. <laughs> anything that touches your face will like scratch and leave a scar, and mm. your lips will be constantly super chapped and mm. splitting open like just, for months. Just projectile vomiting, just horrible diarrhea. No, that part's not bad, but you have to get your blood tested like every other week. It, it, does Which it give you homosexual annoying. tendencies or anything like that? It does. You do end up having to suck <laughs> a couple dicks along the way. Does it the, make you incapable The doctor of said it was just part of the process. It was part of the process, yeah, so yeah. he just unzipped and mm -hmm. shit. He was like, you might as well get it over mm -hmm. with your first one. Well, he was wearing scrubs, so it was easier than unzipping. Well, yeah. he was saying something about the semen being really good for your skin. Oh, mm -hmm. he said so. that's not a rumor that you just read on the internet. It's not mm -hmm. just an old Reddit tale. Mm -hmm. It's true. Semen is good for the skin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Austin. That was delightful. Actually, that was you. The one you you were yeah. the one who took that into the gutter. Thank you, yeah, Leo. I'm sorry. This kid, though, at the end of the interaction, we see that he's got an American flag pop socket on the back of his phone. Oh. And we we both just give him the death glare the second we see that, mm -hmm. and he says, 
don't worry, guys, I'm far left. Maybe just take this as irony. Irony. And I, I think I just like call say it's fucking bullshit and storm off. He storms off. It, Leo. Leo gets him to apologize for having an American flag pop socket. Yeah, I get him to apologize into the camera for having an American flag pop socket guys look i i still don't even know if it's real i'm gonna have to review it on camera to make sure it all happened because we might have hallucinated it that yeah. place was wild man we went and smoked weed with two of the kids on campus uh, uh, a man and a woman yeah we went up met up with them at like 10 p.m mm -hmm. got high mm -hmm. and saw how this campus works let me say this the most magical time of my life may very well have been fall quarter UCLA the first year I got there mm -hmm. because every weekend it's going the fuck off baby mm -hmm. fall there's no better time than fall on a college campus the chicks want to fuck the guys want to drink everybody's been cooped up at home all summer mm -hmm. and that first weekend back even somebody as incompetent as Dino could take down two or three sorority hides look at that we get to evergreen though the most wild dorm party Consists of a game of Monopoly. Wait, no. Monopoly is far too capitalist. Consists of a game of Uno. It would, no, it was Red Light, Green Light. Wasn't it? I'm, I'm trying to think of a board game that these oh. kids would play. Yeah, yeah, they were playing Red Light, Green Light right. out on the lawn. Yeah. But th most people we could see in their dormitories huddled around a television mm -hmm. or huddled around a coffee table, not doing fucking anything. anything. And there were three or four girls. These were like the sorority types there. One of them had giant tits. Two of them, you could tell, were like kind of cute. They were playing red light, green light with the one sort of handsome white kid. Yeah. Those were like the frat bro and sorority girl oh clicks there. Oh, my God, guys. No one's fucking... It was and it, uh, the most breathtakingly beautiful campus ever. To, it was gorgeous. Beautiful Holy campus. Geez. We went out and smoked weed with two of these kids. Yeah. They were convinced the whole time that I was a gay guy and that Leo was straight from Cuba. From Cuba, and I was a, a, you know, an advocator of communism from Cuba. It's great. And even though I have to wait at least three, four hours for the fish <laughs> in the line, uh, dude, it was some... Me and Danny had some great moments of going back and forth, and we all talked... We talk, so We got deep, guys. There's some funny shit that happened in this video. I can't even... We go undercover. We make friends with these people. Mm -hmm. But we decide the parties on campus, the life on campus is so dull that we need to spice things up the next day. Yeah. So we come back, go into the most crowded area we can find, which mm -hmm. is a cafeteria. Mm -hmm. It's the middle of lunch hour. We change. We tell one of the girls who came with us to smoke the night before that, hey, we ain't who we say we are. Yeah. He's not a Cuban refugee mm -hmm. who had to eat octopus. <laughs> and I'm not a gay man from Berkeley who's right. in a Marxist history class. That's right. we were here to party. Mm -hmm. And we took off our breaking news, capitalism sucks t-shirts. Mm -hmm. And we revealed our t-shirts that said, no means yes. And Leo said, and yes means anal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we pulled out that these guys get pussy banner. Oh. We pulled out, I think, 75 necklaces of Mardi Gras beads and we started asking the girls in the cafeteria hey I'll give you a red and a silver if I can see your titties <laughs> and guys um, hilarity ensued and man it's just they don't realize that when they see the camera mm -hmm. like they don't realize that doing what their instinct is to do is exactly what we want and need <laughs> and need. That's so true. It's even <laughs> even more need need. It's yeah. it's our life plan. But like they uh -huh. they so all these girls start immediately foaming at the mouth, start yelling completely irrelevantly yeah. about trans and gay rights. You, you'd hear things like this, like you didn't ask their pronouns. Yeah, it, unbelievable. And somebody's like, what about trans rights? Right. A lot of us are, it, like... Everyone here is gay! They start just, it, it's like yeah. a soundboard on E-bombs world right. in 2002. They just start clicking the liberal soundbite right. soundboard button. That's exactly what it like, felt like. Uh, Black Lives Matter! Get your vaccine. Misogyny. They're like they just yeah. all those things start getting shouted. I've, I've explained to you the NPC meme, and that's exactly what it is. They have these pre-written re responses programmed into their head for whenever they get triggered. Yeah. And like a video game character, they just start spouting off dialogue. Yeah. But no mean yes means no. <laughs> you didn't know me. No. I can't yes even say means, it. Yes means no. That probably is what they think. Yes means no. Even if a girl can sense these days, it's it's still it's rape. If, yes she means no. if she wants it to be, it's still rape. Oh, yeah. 
Um, I, I kind of want, I like that as an idea for a t-shirt. Yes means no. Um, <laughs> so uh, they start yelling all that shit at us. I mean, they start like hissing, foaming at the mouth, screaming at the camera, yeah. men and women. And of course, Leo and I are just like, yes, yeah, we this got is it. the best. Yeah. We should go back to more of these places. Oh my God. Awesome. We, we probably have to make a little trip up to Washington at least once a year. Oh, uh, it was fantastic. It was COVID definitely impacted like the crazy public freak out stuff because there's not a lot of cr big public like when we went to ucla it was basically empty but now places are starting to fill up yeah, yeah. you know it was evergreen we found some life there maybe not well also the school the uh, attendance has halved since this controversy that right. we played the video about earlier the brett weinstein situation so it's really just a tiny school now but it's still it went pretty well considering covid and only two thousand students in attendance there. Oh yeah, which is which is minuscule. UCLA, for comparison, has twenty six thousand undergrads alone, and probably wow. about that number of graduate students. This had two thousand, and a lot of them probably lived off campus. But uh, we had more magic the next day. Oh my god! I mean, it was great. We were just working on. We had no script. We had less than twenty four hours to film this video. We woke up at eight o'clock, had to film a video before our flight left at five in Seattle. And just working on pure heart and ingenuity, me and Leo and Nico fucking raped Seattle we up its Seattle. liberal ass. Oh, right. my God. The climax of which came, I'm talking, after we'd already shot a bunch of fantastic stuff around the city, mm -hmm. we're on the way to the airport, and we see the Westboro Baptist Church, or at least a group very similar, similar yeah. to them, holding, like, God hates fag signs, like mm -hmm. abortion is murder. We see them on the steps of the Seattle courthouse, clashing with women's rights marchers oh yeah, yeah. just uh, basically what you dream up if you want to end a video if you want a little bang to end your video it's it's what you'd conjure from the heavens so i walk up there with a fucking megaphone and this is going to be the start of the video that comes out on friday and i at first i'm just super on the side of the feminists and i'm just chanting all their shit in the megaphone and i've got the most powerful megaphone there Oh my God! Yours was three <laughs> times as loud as any other megaphone. It was the weirdest thing. They were they were asking you to say things. Yeah, so they're they're asking me to say things, and at first I fucking comply, and the chicks yeah. all love me. Yeah. But then I start switching over about <laughs> how we need to overturn the. I'm like, hey, hey, ho, ho! Nineteenth Amendment has got to go. Hey, hey, ho! And then like so the girls are like, hey, what the fuck? And like, and and Westboro Baptist is like, wait, like, is wait. this guy on our side? Yeah. And then I start chanting about the fury of Jesus, and Westboro's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is our guy right here. <laughs> so so Westboro loves sides. me. So Westboro loves me, and I riff on the Jesus shit for a while, and then like this fucking asexual dude in a chick who keeps threatening to mace me or like up in my face. And my story, my cover story is like, hey, man, I'm just a hired gun. I'll just say whatever you guys want me to say into the mic if you slip, if you slip me $20. And then so I start reading an Arby's ad about how oh a roast God. beef sandwich, if you get it with a uh, medium Dr. Pepper and sweet potato fries, is only four ninety nine right now at your local store. I start, yeah, I just start laying into the Arby's ad. But then I, <laughs> then I just go after the women again. And we are chased physically off the property <laughs> by a girl who's threatening to spray pepper spray into my eyeballs. It was nuts. That's just the end of the video, guys. Uh, there, there was way more to that to that video. It was a wild like six hours in Seattle, oh my God. a wild six hours. Yeah, Leo got blacked out on the space needle mm. and had a fucking full on blowout. Full on blowout in the space needle. Paramedics were involved. Yeah, yeah, pull, uh, yeah. The, the fire department had to show up. Yeah, and, and Danny at some point was asking a guy to say that he wanted to fuck me in the ass because my you know my confidence was so low. Oh yeah, because I mean Leo's yeah, yeah. wife cheated on him. My wife cheated on me, and I had a huge breakdown in this in the in the space needle it guys wild but just i mean nico was as always being a, Unbelievable. a huge pain in our ass Seriously, all weekend dude it's i mean he had his moment of glory like he when did. he went up to the uh the, <laughs> the taxi cab broker at lax at end, yeah we get back dude we get back to lax and there is this guy who has black shaved hair like uh, so like this tight little it's actually not really it's like a chia pet it, it wasn't like shaved pet, yeah his head looked like a chia pet <laughs> yeah he's about five foot one yeah. and obese and obese yeah. and he's young so he's yeah. not like an old guy and he's the taxi cab broker he's the guy who like blows the whistle mm. signals in the cab and gets you in one yeah. we get fucking nico and nico is hammered at this point oh completely yeah. he made friends with a guy at the sacramento airport bar who <laughs> bought him a ton of drinks he bought him like four drinks two shots and two beers so Nico goes up to this taxi cab broker and he's like, hey, man, can I get a cab to Fremunda? Yeah. And the guy's like, wait, where the fuck's Fremunda, homie? And Nico's like, 
from under these nuts. <laughs> Woo! He got him with a Fermanda, dude. It turns his fucking Nike oh, yeah. hat sideways. Unreal. And the guy's like, hey, I'll fuck your mom, bitch. Yeah, he's You're a piece so of- pissed. The guy gets so mad. <laughs> he gets so mad. The guy is probably willing to lose oh, yeah. his taxi broker job in order to take a swing at Nico. <laughs> Just for the satisfaction that that will provide. Oh yeah, it listen. That, it just it began and ended with hilarity. This entire trip was uh, out of control. To be and honest, I was so happy that we got a nice two-hour layover mm. Sunday evening at the Sacramento airport to watch the Patriots Buccaneers game. Mm. Didn't you see that one, Swolby? What'd you think of the match? It was solid. I mean, fucking. This will be the football commentator. I, I think you Bill needed to Belichick, replace Max Kellerman on first take, man. Yeah, let's hear this. Bill Belichick is pretty fucking pissed. Let's do this right He's now. Really pissed. Let's let, let's do this right now. Oh. So you're gonna be, I'm gonna be an anchor. I'm gonna be the chick who's just uh, every football show just has the brainless piece of tail mm-hmm. there who's just got her yeah. titties pressed up and her hair done. He's like, all right, welcome to first. Hey, everybody, I'm sure, had a terrific weekend of football watching. We're going to go now to Swolby 1 Kenobi. Swolby, what would you think of the game? Uh, we had, there's a lot of great plays. Um, I, oh, he's doing a comedy bit. Okay, Are you so finish, sexually finish harassing? it up, Swolby. Are you sexually up. harassing her? Oh, it's a great game. You know, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, there's a lot of great plays. Uh, I didn't think Bucks could do it. There's a lot of heavy competition. Bill Belichick was on his game. He was running a lot of good plays. Um, what was one of the plays you liked? Uh, QB slide. Mm. Is that real or did you just improvise that? I, I just improvised <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Not bad, Swole. I like it. The QB slide? The QB yeah. slide. Yeah, Belichick is renowned for those. I don't know what a QB slide uh, is. Maybe it's way, a real uh, thing. What's your name, sweetheart? Uh, oh. It's Tiffany. Wow. You're very gorgeous. But anyway. Uh, nice. You know. I had myself a little brewski and I just decided, you know, I buy a ticket today and uh, I got to see the goat, Tom Brady. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You have very beautiful eyes. Right, by there the way. we go. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. You, can uh, you know, your friend did, that you fucking called that you were that told him you were gay last week. Did you ever uh, did you ever call him back? He did. He called me back. And you were like, it was a joke or the pod. No, no. He stuck with his story. <laughs> you did, right? Yeah. Nice. That oh, was, that's so cool. funny. He was dude. worried about me for like a week. You should call him up right now and say you want to suck Tom Brady's <laughs> dick or something. Yeah, that fucking game, that football game. I'm not sure how many people. How do you feel about, about the fact that Tom didn't score a touchdown? I had my fantasies. You love Tom Brady. I do. And it, I feel like such a little bitch boy because I used to make fun of my mom. I said, Mom, the only reason you like this guy is because he's the best and he's handsome. Mm-hmm. You're such a bandwagon fan. But then... I started to, instead of being a hater, Mm -hmm. appreciate Tom Brady for the motivation he can provide in your own life. He's an example. You need those examples of the limits of human potential. Yeah. If you can see Tom Brady march out there against Atlanta, down 28 to 3, and come back, complete every pass, convert every two-point conversion, and then drill the fucking ball into the end zone in overtime, then why the fuck can't you make rent this month? (laughs) That's right. Why the fuck can't you get in shape? He's unbelievable. Why can't you find a quality life partner? Yeah. If Tom Brady can do all that. So that's why I love Brady now. Oh, yeah. And also... I mean, I read Belichick's book. He's a cool guy, but just he seems to be the the general consensus. A lot of books have been written on this. One has come out now that paints him as the biggest cocksucker in all of football, essentially. This new book that came out, this tell-all, just everybody from the owner of the Patriots, Robert Kraft, to Tom Brady, to a lot of guys on the Patriots, the consensus is Bill Belichick is a robot who doesn't give a fuck about anybody on the team and only cares about winning, but is so egotistical that he actually hurts their chances of winning at times, uh, i.e. by being unable to draft any good football players. Wow. And he hasn't been able to do that since, I don't know, 2016 draft anybody because he gets emotional what is he he wants he's just, a certain he, he's guy. so egotistical that he thinks he can do everything gotcha he thinks he could be the general manager and the head coach mm. he thinks he doesn't need tom brady he can draft a kid named mac jones and be just as good mm. when of course that's not true mm. so yeah i wanted tom brady to go out there and i wanted him to put up 50 and i wanted devin white and the defensive line on tampa bay to break mac jones's neck mm-hmm. but instead we got a close game where both teams didn't score 20 points. What if Giselle started blowing him in his post-game interview and, and that's when Belichick came by? 
And he's getting blown by Giselle. Leo, I, I love that you're just rooted in comedic realism. Just You always propose these situations where it's like, hmm, that, you know, I'm surprised that actually didn't happen. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, that's that would be awesome. Hmm. Yeah, I wish he would have FaceTimed Belichick while he was getting blown by Giselle. <laughs> what do you I, think of Tom Brady like making out with his son? I think Dude, that's what the fucking righties. That's all they. All, that's all they bring up. They it's, hate Tom Brady. You know. You know he has a fucking. He used to have a MAGA hat in his locker. Yeah, so but that then he switched. He kind of switched sides. He went to the Biden. He went to Biden and said, said like a joke about like forty percent people. Know, I know. You know he still loves Trump though. Giselle, his fucking wife, made him denounce Trump publicly. But he loves Trump. Him and Belichick love Trump. No, yeah, yeah I'm sure. I just found that. It doesn't make me automatically dislike. It's a guys. European thing. It's a I never fucking weird. I never kissed my dad though, but it is a European You're thing. Asking his son to come back for second. Yeah, it's he might Tom Brady if he wasn't as great of a football player as he was, I would say he needs to be in the uh, toaster filled dolphin tank <laughs> with Miguel or whatever his name is. Would you say okay, let's say the guy from fucking Barstow, the the greenhouse guy, the guy with the the dogs that were shitting everywhere. What do you call that guy? You remember that guy? Yeah. What if he was kissing his son like Tom Brady kisses his son? What would you do? Yeah, then I would call Child Protective Services. <laughs> Actually, we probably should have called Child Protective Services. Why didn't on that we? Guy that poor child. Yeah. Yeah. The the Bill Belichick Tom Brady thing. I uh, I think Tom Brady was sick before the game. I think he was really emotional, and he threw the ball all over the place in the first half. I've heard that. I didn't actually see that, because we only saw the second half. Yeah. He, did, he, he, he had some bad throws in the first half. Yeah. That's, he, the first, that, that's the half that I saw. He was looking like Dino out there in the park near my house. Um, huh. uh, uh, Dino. Dino you, can throw, throw a football. Oh, my God. It's bad. It's bad. Tom Brady, though, they got the job done. The team got the job done. And Tom Brady made some fine throws. The running game was was the only impressive mm-hmm. part. The run game and the run defense were maybe the only things the Buccaneers did well. Also, their secondary is completely gutted right now. I was telling my roommate Noah about this. The thing that's great about football is it's so well balanced. With the salary cap, it's like a fighting game. Mm-hmm. Where this character does this thing well, but not that thing well. Yeah. Fox has the laser gun, but Jigglypuff can go Jigglypuff. Yeah, I don't know what Jigglypuff's moves are, but in a salary cap, one of your units in football basically has to suck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jigglypuff can sleep. On the Buccaneers, their pass rush is incredible. Their offensive line is pretty good. Their receivers are A plus plus plus, but their defensive backfield, whose job it is to guard the opposing team's wide receivers is bad. Hmm. And recently they've gotten injured in droves, so they're really bad. And there's nothing you can do about it. Every team has a weakness, and every team is liable to have that weak unit get hurt and get even weaker. So they went in against the Patriots with a decimated secondary, and that's why Mac Jones looked okay at all. The first, the game before that, he looked fucking terrible. And um, still, even with all that, the look on Bill Belichick's face when... The game-winning kick by the Patriots, the potential game-winning kick, goes up into the air, travels 53 yards, and then thunks off the uprights Mm. and falls harmlessly to the turf where the refs go horizontally with their arms, signaling no good. They cut to Bill Belichick's face, and you see a man crushed, a man so angry because that was his last chance to prove that he was responsible for New England's success and not Tom Brady. You think Tom's going to uh, play another year? You don't think he's going to play another year? And he's definitely going to play another year, but they're in a different division. So the chances uh-huh. they play each other, I mean, I'm sure this game did insane ratings, so maybe mm-hmm. the NFL makes them play each other again. Right. But, I mean, Tom Brady's going to retire soon, and Belichick's going to retire soon. Belichick's definitely not going to any more Super Bowls, and this was his last chance to fucking to prove something to Tom Brady. And he can't. You don't think he can turn the season around and make that team win? Well, they're in the same division with the Bills. Hmm. So they're going to get clobbered by the Bills. And they're already 1-3. And, and Mac Jones is a rookie quarterback who, like, his last game was an, was an abomination. So we'll see. You know who else is doing bad as a rookie? Who? Oh. As well as Mac Jones? Trevor Lawrence. He's 0-3 right now. He's 0-4. The, 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 the guy with the long hair? Yeah. Of course, dude. They're yeah, crushing smash. that guy. That guy looks like a Neanderthal. Yeah. <laughs> He does. Do you think? I mean, I think that he hasn't been around some of those big ass, you know, like thug black guys, and they're they're kind of getting in his head. You know what I mean? I think that's what's going on. <laughs> Please elaborate. I think this I is an think, absurd theory, but I want to hear it. They just go up to him and be like, "Yo, what, what a white boy! You think what a man? And they drop their pants and they just got some, some hammers. You know what I mean? He's got to learn. He's got to learn how to fucking be an alpha in that fucking locker room. They're not going to follow the quarterback. They're not yeah. going to go to war with that guy yeah. if he's shying away from those big black cocks. Yeah, yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? So you're saying if there's a white quarterback mm -hmm. who does well in his first year, mm -hmm. it's probably because he has a big cock yes. and the black kids respect him. 100. Joe Burrow last year, big cock. and uh, Herbert on the Chargers mm -hmm. last year, big beast. cock, big cocks. Oh, Joe Burrow, you could tell him he's got that big dick energy, as they say. Yeah. I so Leo, this is interesting uh, because um, last year's quarterback class mm -hmm. performed very, very well, except for Tua. But right out of the mm -hmm. gate, Herbert. And Burrow did great work. Mm. This year, everybody's struggling, but two of the new rookie quarterbacks are black. Oh. How do you explain them underperforming? Justin uh, Fields and Trey Lance. Are they underperforming? They are underperforming. Every rookie quarterback this year is underperforming. It oh, well, probably has yeah. something to do with with racism. You think so? Systematic racism. is. Pro there's probably something Systemic. with their ancestors that's, like, he, he's not able to, you know, like, practice as many days because, like, Oppression, mm. uh, just because oppression. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like the mm. the highways, they they charge him like exorbitant fees at the toll booth. Like, oh, I'll you're, tell you're you black. Why. This is going to be a hundred grand. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Whitey McFlynn. Yeah, twenty five cents, and you're good to go. Yeah, Trey Lance. A, it's going to be a hundred grand. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what it is, Danny. It's really simple. What these uh, these black guys? They go, it, you know, in the black community, it is huge, and you know this will be. You got to be a ladies' man. You got to be getting tail left and right. You got to be. Smashing. Why would Swolby know this? As if Swolby speaks for the black community. I don't know. I feel like Swolby said you got probably the most black friends. <laughs> He's of Asian. All of us. You're Asian and Mexican, right? You got a lot of black friends, right? He's Asian and Mexican. Bro, he would. He, he's. Uh, he for sure. He, he would. He would be able to go in the hood and just and be fine. I think he could talk a little Ebonics, Swolby. I think oh, if we really no. needed somebody to, you don't think so. Oh, uh, we went down to Crenshaw right now. I think he'd be we, fine. We make like mad friends. Or... I think they would respect Swolby. I think they would respect Swolby. But, but continue. Okay, so these black quarterbacks are coming up, right? And uh, they're getting outshined at the club by the other, by the guys on the O line, by the linebacker, by the fucking tight end. They're taking all the bitches. I don't home. think the O line gets any pussy. Okay, but maybe not the O line. So the quarterbacks are getting outshined. They're getting, okay. He's getting outshined, and he's getting out. You know, you, you got to get your pussy game up. So when he's coming in the league, the first thing he's got to do is got to get good at getting some high end tail. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And when he starts showing everybody else, you know those those videos of him fucking. You know, that's what the first thing to do in the locker room. You know. That that's what that's what's going on. So right now his pussy numbers are too low. Uh -huh. The uh you know they're looking at him and they're like, nah, man, yeah. we can't go to war with this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He never even fucked. He never even had a foursome, motherfucker. So you're uh, shit. You're, you have a foursome. You have a foursome. Yeah. You have a, motherfucker ain't never have a foursome. That's what's going on right now. So your pussy ratio matters yeah. more than your TD interception ratio. Hundred percent. I, I want to say this: that in colleges there are Marxist readings of mm -hmm. history, feminist interpretations of Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Leo's interpretation of everything is a pussiest interpretation. Yes. <laughs> he can explain shortcomings of rookie quarterbacks through mm -hmm. their pussy skills. Mm -hmm. He can explain why Martin Luther King is or is not an important figure through legend. his pussy getting. Huge is legend. Derek Jeter a competent shortstop? Some would say no. I say yes because he got a lot of tail. There we go. What do you think about the Egyptians and their pussy? Well, they got a lot of pussy. Dude. We but we don't know about them. Why, not, we don't know about them. Not, so yeah. yeah, yeah. They got a lot of pussy. Dude. What would happen? Because, you know, they stock the tombs mm -hmm. of the important men with a lot of jewelry, a lot of gold cups, sometimes even live slaves. Uh, hopefully and mummified cocks. I believe some of them mummified would have, cocks. Yeah, they would mummify their cocks so they could use it in the afterlife. And they would reserve that for the guys who got the most, most pussy. pussy. Oh, the king was okay. the guy who got the most pussy. You get the most pussy. You have the most power. So Khufu, Remember that, Dina. So Khufu, mm -hmm. who they built the second pyramid at Giza in honor of, mm -hmm. the biggest one in the middle, how much pussy do you think Khufu got? <laughs> he was the Hugh Hefner of the Egyptians. Yeah, he there's was, a, that's the only way. Oh, my God. He was 13 years old. He was pulling tail that uh -huh. was way older than him. Mm -hmm. And he was just like... He's just like a, a Lothario with his tongue. You Genghis know what I mean? Khan, what's your opinion? Oh, well, come on. You're talking oh, about the Godfather. You know, Genghis Khan, I mean, fuck Wilt Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. Genghis That's... Khan is the number one pussy fucker all time. Dude, Genghis Khan, we got to give it, we got to give it to him, man. He slayed the most pussy and so many lives, too. Yeah, we got to give it up to give it up to our boy Genghis. <laughs> Would you double team a girl with Genghis Khan? If I could go back in time? No, no. Like, if he came here and you, like, didn't... If you were not mystified by the fact that, like, a, a dude from the Middle Ages dressed in furs was in yeah. front of you suddenly, mm -hmm. would you double team chicks with Genghis Khan? Absolutely. Why not? <laughs> I, of course I would. If, if, if Genghis Khan morphed into this room and the first thing he wanted to do was just go somewhere and find a bitch... 
I'm going. You know I'm his tactics might not be how you say legal. These yeah, days. they probably wouldn't be legal nowadays. It's I'm just I, I think shooting arrows yeah. into a city mm. and then just raping whatever you find left alive isn't considered ethical. <laughs> how shocked would it be if if the first thing Genghis did was just take me to Venice for a couple of drinks? Dude starts taking it slow. Just has the best game of yeah, all time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just slicks his. What's hair your back. name? Yeah. Oh, your eyes so beautiful. <laughs> With want to go for a walk on pier? Yeah, dude. I'm like, oh, dude, Genghis, dude, Genghis, dude, Genghis, dude. Look at that dude. Fucking oh. Genghis. Hey, <laughs> shove off, asshole. This is my girl. Oh, Genghis just draws yeah, just, a sword. Dude, we're like, no, no, cuts Genghis, off you can't kill him. Can't head kill him. <laughs> dude. And then just some girl goes rollerblading by. Genghis just loses it and oh impales her with a spear. Oh, my God. Genghis, dude. what are you doing? Oh, bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> you think he just drop his Instagram on a, on a chick like his handle? Like Dude, that'd be so the funny. real Genghis the Khan. Twelve thirteen. I don't even know. Dude, what I think. Uh, dude, what? Do you think Asian Andy could play Genghis? Genghis is Khan. Genghis Khan's fucking long. I don't know if he's related to Genghis Khan, and he and he's he has the same you know. Habits. Uh, I th- I probably have more Genghis Khan DNA than Asian Andy. <laughs> yeah, you probably do. Swolby for sure. Swolby does. Confirmed. Swolby, you were a samurai in your past life, I my was. friend. I, I don't think Genghis Khan was Japanese. There might have been Chinese samurai too. Mm. Genghis, is Mulan Genghis, Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan is Mongolian, if I'm mistaken. I, mean, I don't know. I, could, I, could I don't know. You're no, you're right. right. He's Mongolian. Yeah, he's yeah dude. He's... What has Mongolia done since? They were uh, a world power once, huh? Doug, Doug Standup had a bit about Mongolia, and it made me look up Mongolia, and I just thought, holy fuck. What a terrible place to live. You, you know war, what? Huh? I read a little article on him in a magazine, and I want to say his origin story is like some other tribe leader kidnapped Genghis Khan's girlfriend or wife, made that girlfriend or wife the enemy tribe leader's bitch, and just like got her pregnant a bunch of times. Genghis Khan marshaled an army. Just like Rocky, think of Rocky Balboa montage, but instead of hitting a heavy bag and fucking chasing after pigeons in Philadelphia... Genghis Khan's like sharpening arrows and spears and learning to ride horseback. He goes into that village, takes his bride back, and just kills everybody. Oh my god! You think he got some fucking some some dome that night? You think he got a little blowjob? I would assume so. What if the girl was just not even down with him anymore? She's like, oh "Oh, god, why'd you kill my new husband? He was so much better than you, and it's a huge dick. Thick, dude. Guaranteed, that's what she did. And Genghis face fucks her, cuts her head off. Oh my god! Finds a new bride. I mean, it's a very, like, Link Zelda-like story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I never really uh, played Zelda. What is the allure of Zelda? I'm looking at you, Dino. Also, I didn't like Zelda. Fucking puzzles, dude. Not I mean, based. Yeah, it's not Yeah, based. It's, it's a puzzle game. Okay, so that's why you'd like it. Yeah, I see that. But it, the puzzles are hidden behind this whole knight in shining armor style medieval right. story and the bosses you fight are dragons and monsters cool. and it's it's not tetris right. there are just some puzzle like elements and then it gets down to like fun sword fighting and action shit and it sounds uh, i mean it is one of the most popular games of all time yeah right? it's one of the most successful yeah. franchises ocarina of time ocarina of time yeah you it, uh, you enjoy the zelda yeah it's a good game Dude, I'm, I'm such a weird uh, video game guy. I never really got into them. I was, pl- I was playing baseball always, but I played a little Tomb Raider, which is random. I wonder why. I shed giant I'd back, her, I'd back her into the baby. old corner. Yep. Look All right, guys. This has been the Leo and Danny Show. I got to take a call from somebody who might be interested in sponsoring this podcast. Yes. Right now. And, and Patreon. He might not be interested after this podcast airs where yeah, we talk about the, uh, the fat whale watching boat. But, God uh, damn it. Thank you, guys. Let's go.